I have no idea, to be honest. No clue. But I'm gonna put right here on the screen how much I spent. Hey friends, how are y'all today? Today we are starting 13 different types of seeds, plus I've got two sweet potatoes here that we are gonna start for our sweet potato slips. I'm gonna do these in the dirt instead of doing them in water from what I've been researching that tends to actually have better success rates. The main things we're gonna start today are our tomatoes, our peppers, our sweet potatoes, and our onions. I'll put on my box. We're not actually gonna be able to start our onions today. Evidently, both types of onions I bought are long day onions. And down here in the southeast, we need short day onions from my understanding. I thought these would work. They're yellow sweet Spanish onions. And I know I have Walla Walla onions, which I know will not work where I'm at. So we're gonna have to research these so we're not gonna get those started today. Instead, we're just gonna do 12 different types of seeds and two types of sweet potatoes. It will be okay, we will get there. Okay, so what seeds are we actually getting started with today? I have ground cherries. These are Aunt Molly's ground cherries. These are from Baker Creek. I have Amish paste tomatoes. These are from Seeds for Generations. Beef steak tomatoes. These are from Seeds for Change. Oh, Seeds of Change. San Marzano tomatoes. These are from Seeds for Generations. Beta Lux, I think is how you said this one. This one's from Baker Creek. I grew this one last year. It grew a lot of tomatoes, but it grew very, very small ones. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just something I did as a new gardener or what, so we're gonna try it again. So I have cayenne pepper seeds here. These are actually from a neighbor's cayenne pepper plant. She gave me a few of the peppers that I dried for seeds. I have early jalapeno peppers. These are from the Burpee Company. I think I picked these up at Tractor Supply. Somehow I did all my seed shopping this year and yes, didn't pick up jalapenos. So yes, I grabbed those one day while yes, I was out. These are Bullnose Bell Peppers. These are from Baker Creek. We also grew these last year. I picked this variety because this is fantastic for container gardening. The pepper plants stay fairly small. I think they topped out at like three feet for us. They produced a ton of peppers, but they're kind of small peppers. But they're really good. So I am growing them again. I'm gonna see how they do compared in ground to how they did in my container garden last year, but I was pretty happy with them. I just wish the peppers would have been bigger and the flesh of them would have been thicker. Then I have banana pepper seeds. These I also grew last year. The pack's already open. These things. I think I just picked these up at Walmart on a whim because I had an extra five gallon bucket of plant. These things grew and grew and grew. I mean, like we had so many banana peppers from this plant and I only had one plant going and we had banana peppers for months. It was crazy. We really, really enjoyed these. This is another bell pepper. This one is a California Wonder. It's from Seeds for Generations. This is supposed to be a very large bell pepper that's for like stuffing peppers. We love bell peppers and I use them in a lot of my cooking. So I love, love to grow them. This one is a orange bell pepper also from seeds for generations. And last but not least, we have the red Marconi pepper for um, seeds for generations. I have never tried this one. It's interesting in its shape because it's like a longer pepper, but it's more like a bell pepper. If you've had this red Marconi, I know it's very common. So let me know what you think of it. I'm hoping we love it. And then I've got two sweet potatoes here that I picked up at the grocery store. Starting seed mix. What do you use? Last year, this is what I used and it did fantastic. It is, oh, this Pro Mix Premium Moisture Potting Mix. I get this at Walmart. Sorry, the bag is really dirty. So y'all, it's been, Declan's been playing with it. So y'all probably couldn't have seen so much. It is not specifically for starting seeds. However, the ingredients in it are peat moss, perlite, coconut core, ground limestone to adjust for pH, and then a wetting agent it says, and then like myco, mycor, is it, I don't know. But it also has viable spores in it. 
So it basically has ingredients in it that you would find in a seed starting mix. Even though it's not a seed starting mix. It's also not potting soil. So there's no actual soil in this mix, if that makes sense. I don't know. This is what I used last year. I had a great success rate with it. It is a very light soil. It's in a compressed bag, so you kind of have to take chunks of it out and spread it apart. So it says this compressed pack equals two bags of one cubic foot of potting soil or potting mix. But this is what I'm using. I find it at Walmart. It's like $12 for this bag and this bag does quite a bit. So since that's what I've started with before and it worked out great, that's what I'm going to continue with because I already know how this mix is and I don't know a lot of other mixes. So that's what we're using. We buy our eggs right now in five dozen boxes of eggs because our chickens will not be here till the end of February and then they're not going to start laying for several, several months. So I buy five dozen boxes of eggs at the grocery store. And I just cut out one of the boxes for cardboard and those are going to be dividers in my seed starting tray. So I'm also going to go through and on this cardboard, I'm going to put a piece of clear tape down. On that clear tape, I'm going to write the name of the seed that I am starting in that section and then I'm going to put a clear piece of tape over it. That will keep it from smearing when it gets wet or if anything happens to it. And that way the name does not wear off. So I'm going to go through and label all of my, um, my cardboard and then we'll get our seed starting mix in our, in our containers here and we'll get going. So one thing I'm very well known for is being very frugal. We are building our homestead on a budget. And so when I look to do things, I always try to repurpose anything that I can and make do with what we have on hand instead of spending money on stuff. So that's why I'm not buying fancy dividers. I don't have fancy trays. I've got these little cheap plastic trays. I think I picked these up at Lowe's. They were like $3 each and I just picked up three of them to start off with. This two of them will start all of my seeds that I need to start right now. We are also an off-grid homestead so I don't have a big indoor seed starting area because I'm not using that much power for lights. And I'm not using heat mats or anything like that. So I try to keep all of my stuff in one area. I do have grow lights that I will be running. I got them off Amazon last year. I can link those for you. I'll have to find them through my purchases. But they're pretty cool. They have a timer on them. So I just set them to run for 12 hours since we're indoors and then that will they'll do all that on their own i don't have to worry about any of that they were not expensive the light itself is on a stand and it's got two branches that branch off and you can position those to however you want them so i will position them so that they're going long ways over the trays so like parallel with the trays to be able to cover as much plants as possible with the lights I go? Okay. So again, this is a very, very cheap, frugal seed starting setup. If you want to get fancy with your setup, go for it. Do what makes you happy. I'm just putting down a piece of tape. I'm writing on that tape what the seed is. And then beside it, I will put pep for pepper or tom for tomato. And then I'm putting another piece of clear tape over that. Now, another great thing about using cardboard and tape as my seed markers is I can rip the tape off of this and then compost the cardboard. You got more wood chips. Declan's helping his daddy get wood chips. So I am actually in growing zone 8A. My last average frost date is April 12th. As for how many of these I'm going to start, I have no idea to be honest. No clue. I am going to grow as many as I can and be happy with it. So I'm opening just a small portion and then that's why I have this plastic container here and I will just pull some out and fluff it up in here. This is a very very light fine mix. There's no big 
clumps. There's no big pieces or anything like that that you have to worry about. So I'm just going through and breaking this compressed bag up. Once you loosen this soil, you will never get it to fit back into this bag. So that's what I'm doing, just a little bit at a time and just fluffing it up as I go. Okay, now I'm gonna go get a cup of warm water, like body temperature water, to pour over this and start getting it wet. Okay, so I'm gonna start pouring some water in and just mixing it in so that the soil is moist. This, because of the ingredients in it, holds a lot of water. So, so far I have about 32 ounces. I've got a, like a giant 16 ounce cup here. And I've got about 32 ounces in it so far. And it's just wet enough to stick together but not really not wet enough that i can really squeeze any water out of it so that is exactly what i'm looking for i look at some worms what do you think do i need to make some more i like it you like it <laughs> okay well i'm glad you like it I like and it. i have an entire another one of these black trays that is not used up right now so when it comes time that some of these need to be like up planted ah. or thinned or anything i can always add another tray or if i have more seeds coming up that need to be started i have a whole another tray and like i said these trays are like right at three dollars a piece from lowe's compared to the other i've seen and so these are very very uh, frugal if I need to just go pick up one it's not that big of a deal okay so next what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take them one at a time and I'm going to stick my cardboard dividers in here and I will just have to kind of work with it and play with it to get them where I want them to get them spaced out the way I want them but each divider is cut so that it sticks up above the top so that I don't have to worry too much about anything spilling over. I can see in between them. I know what I've got. So this is what we're looking at. I wrote on the white side of the cardboard. That way it was easier to read. And I put the brown side to the back. Every single one of them is lined up. The plants that I'm not starting that many of, like my cayenne, and my jalapenos i have two in each spot and then i'm going to take and cut another piece of cardboard and i'll stick them in between them and i'm going to do that right now and then i'm just going to slide that right in between eh, i think i'll do it a little bit more this way i want more jalapeno peppers than i want cayenne so i'm going to put it more with the cayenne having a smaller side so you see how I just stuck the divider in here. So my cayenne peppers will get started right here in this one little section. And my jalapeno peppers have this whole section. And then my bullnose has this. And my banana peppers have this. And then these that don't have dividers, the whole thing will be that one type of pepper. So I'm just going to do the same for the other side where my tomatoes are going. And if you notice, each cardboard section was cut a little long. And it's got wings on the side, you could call them. And that is just to help keep it in place a little better um that way i don't have to worry about it falling over it kind of has its own little kickstands tomatoes i will be starting several of them in these sections because they pull apart so easy and then i could up plant them from there and then for the sweet potatoes those are easy You sink the sweet potatoes in the dirt and then I will mound a little bit of dirt on them and that's all you have to do for them. They're pretty easy. I am starting with this early jalapeno pepper that I picked up at Tractor Supply. People have an issue with buying seeds at Tractor Supply and I'm not sure why. If you look on the back, it is an heirloom 
seed. It is not GMO. Just because it does not say GMO does not mean it is GMO. You're not going to buy GMO seed to try to display like this. It's it's not going to happen. It's not legal to be sold like that. On the back of these packets, it'll say something like plant 18 inches apart or something. That's not seed starting. That's when you've got your actual plants. Put your plants that far apart because they get bushy and they bush out. But you can start your seeds much, much closer together. So remember, you can always thin these out later on if you need to. Pepper seeds are really, really, really easy to save your own. I already have some of these banana pepper seeds that I saved from last year. So I've got those put back and I'm using the ones in the packet because, I mean, I'm on my second year now of using the same packet and there's probably enough in here for two more years uh, for is the amount I grow. So, I mean, there's a lot of seeds in here and I don't need that much, especially with saving them. It's so easy. All you do to save a pepper seed is to let it get right and take the seeds out. Oh, that's all of those. So we're going to finish off this bullnose pepper packet. I'm putting them pretty densely in here. I want to say last year they were the ones that germinated the least. So I used extra last year and I'm using extra this year as well. They just were not my favorite. I will not be buying these peppers again. They're great, great, great for container gardens. They grow very small plants. If you need something that'll grow on your balcony, these will do it. But they do not handle very well to as much sun as we get here. And they just did not perform as well as I wanted them to. Next is California Wonder. These are new to me. I haven't had these before. So there were only 25 seeds in this packet, which is not a lot. Okay, next is the orange bell pepper. And one thing I am noticing, um, these seeds from the smaller seed companies, these seeds for generations and stuff, have less seeds in them than the ones you get from like Tractor Supply. They may have a better germination rate because they are a better quality seed. So we'll have to see how that goes. But for these that have only 25 seeds in the packet, I am actually starting the entire packet of seeds because I want a lot of bell peppers to put up. We do pepper jelly that takes a lot of bell peppers and I use a lot, lot of bell peppers in my cooking. I put it in everything. So I want to be able to grow a lot of bell peppers. And I am just going through and sprinkling these in and then anywhere that like a clump of seeds fell out of my hand i'm going and picking some of those up and filling the gaps with those so that each seed has a little bit of space to germinate but i'm not too particular on how much space save your seed packets unless you plan on like taking pictures of them or writing down all the information because these have a lot of information on growing them and you'll want to have that for future reference Go. You potatoes, potatoes. i got potatoes so i'm taking a little bit more of my potting mix here i'm going to go ahead and wet it down and that way i can use that to cover over my seeds now i'm just going to lightly make a mess <laughs> Lightly cover. Lightly make a mess. Yeah. Well, I was trying to say lightly cover and then I made a mess. I think you're just going to make a mess. I did make a mess already. Lightly cover your seeds. You don't need much soil for pepper seeds. Once you got it on there, just kind of like brush it over the seed. That's it. Our pepper seeds are started. Now for our sweet potato back here. I am just mounting some dirt up. Not a ton. You just want it about two-thirds of the way up the sides it's got to be touching the sweet potato for it to germinate all right sweet potato one is done i've never started my own sweet potatoes before i have been watching a ton of youtube videos of course about how to do it and a lot of people stick them in water and let them sprout that way okay let's get the tomatoes planted guys it is starting to get chilly out here now one thing about tomato seeds as you can plant these a whole lot more densely because tomatoes actually grow roots from their stalk so when you're separating them if some of the roots break off it's not as damaging because tomatoes will regrow roots also when you prune them the suckers you prune off if you stick them in dirt they will grow roots so tomatoes 
I've never saved the seeds from them because I think there's a little bit of a trickier process. I know Jess from Roots and Refuge has mentioned it a few times. I know she saves her seeds. But she mentioned something like fermenting the seeds or something to get the casing off of them so you can save them. So I haven't went that far yet, but I'm going to try that this year. This Betta Lux pepper from Baker, I mean, sorry. This Betta Lux tomato from Baker Creek, I was also not that big of a fan of. It is fantastic, again, for container gardening. That's why I chose it. It stays very small, but its tomatoes are also very small. They're not, they're not cherry sized. They're bigger than bite sized tomatoes, but they're not like a tomato. They, yeah, they're probably about the size of a golf ball. I just, I'm going to go ahead and finish out that packet and grow those because I'm not wasting seeds. But I will not save the seeds from that one unless some mysterious thing happens and they blow me away this year. I don't know. We'll see. So this is the San Marzano. And again, I'm probably going to go ahead and start all, oh, I got some tomato seeds in my, in my sweet potatoes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start all of these. I will probably thin them out. I'm not. I'm going to try to save my own seeds this year. So it's more important to me to be able to grow and start as many as I can. And then I'll save seeds than it is for me to only use half this pack and then have some to plant next year. I can worry about next year next year with my own seeds. And I will save whatever I'm a fan of this year. So that is my goal for this year is to grow everything or as much of everything as I want to and then save what does really well here and what I really, really like. And then from there on out for the uh, gardens and futures, I will save enough this year to plant at least two, if not three more years of seeds. That will be my thing every year. I will save back seeds, but I always want to keep at least two, if not three years worth of seeds put up. I'm not worrying about that this year. This is our first big garden, so we're going all out, but in the future, that's how I plan to do it. I chose the beefsteak because they're supposed to get very, very, very large. And I definitely want some large tomatoes. Ooh. Ooh. I can say right now that I do not like this packaging because the seeds are getting stuck in this one. This is the seeds of change packaging. I think this came from Tractor Supply also. It may have came from wood. Next is the Amish Paste Tomato. I have high hopes for this one. I have heard great things about it. I'm hoping this will be like my favorite like canning tomato, you know, for making sauces. We don't really eat a lot of tomatoes. I will can some for soups and stuff, but other than that, it will all be sauces. Tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce. And the last one we're going to plant is the ground cherries. Now, Baker Creek doesn't tell you, as far as I can see on here, how many seeds are in their package. A lot of commercial seeds don't. Oh my goodness. These ground cherry seeds are so teeny, teeny, tiny. Like, this is crazy. They're nothing like a normal tomato seed. I would not have guessed that these were tomato seeds if I had just seen them. Wow. I just poured some out in my hand and it was a whole lot more than I thought it was going to be. But I'm going to go ahead and plant all of the ones that I poured out in my hand. There are still a lot in here. So I'm guessing there was probably about 50 seeds in this. And I've noticed Baker Creek does definitely put more seeds in there than somewhere like seeds for generations. Baker Creek, yes. So I just sprinkled a little bit and then I'm dusting it onto the seeds. Because you do not want them to be too deep. And then I lightly press, make sure all seeds are in contact. Check for any that's sticking out, because I seem to like to have those. Okay, next row, dusting. Oh, there's one poking out. Poking out. So this was our compressed bag of soil. This 
white line right here, I don't know if y'all can see that, is where the top of it was. This is how much of it I've used. This is where the top of it was filled to, and I've kind of just scooped out this little divot in it. That's it. That's how much soil I use to start these seed trays. I can start so much more seed trays from this little bag of soil mix, and this was only like 12 something at Walmart. Super great buy. So the next thing I do that really helps me have great seed starting success is I cover my seed trays in plastic wrap. Now, you don't have to do this. If you're using heat mats or something like that, you really don't have to do this. But this just helps the soil retain some moisture and some warmth. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this. So if you're against plastic wrap, don't do it. I know some people buy those aluminum baking trays that have like the plastic lids and they use that. I don't see how that's any different than using this plastic wrap because to me, this plastic wrap is thinner than the plastic used for that. So it takes less plastic and it breaks down faster than that. So. That's my soapbox on it. Do you and do what works best for you. This is what I have found works best for me. But this kind of makes its own little like greenhouse effect. And it just works out really well. This one is ready to go inside um, and go under my grill lights. Hey. All right, let mama start cleaning up her mess. Clean up my mommy's mess. Clean up mommy's mess, that's right. We gotta clean up mommy's mess. Oh, done. I'm all done. Okay, friends. So I have brought you inside of our RV to show you where I will be starting my seeds at. So this closet behind me is actually meant for a washer and dryer, but being off grid, we do not have a washer and dryer. Uh, we either hand wash our clothes or we will take them to the laundromat if it is really cold outside and I don't want to hand wash. We have lived in our RV for two years and have done it this way for two years and I have no problem with it. I have no problem with continuing it into the future so this closet behind me when we bought the rv we knew we would not be putting a washer and dryer in here in fact this rv was picked out specifically for this closet because we had an all-natural soap business that we were operating even while traveling and this closet right here has been our soap storage closet where i kept all of my business supplies throughout our two years of living in this rv but when we moved on to our homestead property, I shut down our soap business so we could focus on our homestead and getting it up and running. And in the future, I will reopen the soap business under the homestead's name and hopefully using ingredients primarily sourced right here on our homestead or at local homesteads nearby. That is going to be my goal when I reopen. This is just a shoe organizer that I use to store stuff in. It is great to keep little things up away from Declan, especially things I don't want him to get a hold of, like scissors and tape and glue and stuff. I can close this door and he can't get to it. So that is what this is, and it's worked out fantastic. And then I have metal shelves behind me. You can see all of my soap. When we closed the business, I didn't mean we, we did not sell out of our soap before we closed on purpose i wanted to have plenty of soap to get my family through this time of not having our soap business up and going so i have plenty of soap still in here this soap will be condensed down and moved here soon and then i will turn this into my pantry until our home is built but for now it's going to be our seed starting place right here on this top shelf and if i need to start more seeds and stuff i could continue down but our problem with seed starting and why i do not start a whole bunch is because we are off grid we have a small solar system and then we rely on a generator as well for our power needs so we keep our needs for power as low as possible so i try to start as many seeds as I can in a very confined space and only start the ones that have to be started indoors before our first frost date. Anything that can wait and be started outside will be started outside. Everybody has these elaborate setups where they want to start all their seeds and get them in the ground and get their harvest going and get it all done. There, there, there. But instead, we're just going to stretch it out. I will start seeds that I can inside. Those that can wait will wait and be started outside. And then I can start some throughout the season as well. That's going to reduce our power needs because I only have to rely on this one small light up here. So I now have my lights set on a timer. They're going to run 
for 12 hours. It has two heads here. These completely bend and I can move them however I need and I've just got them as center on the trays as I possibly can get them. This door will close and it'll basically trap all the light in here. And I will run this fan up here right on the seed seedlings when the plastic wrap comes off and that will help strengthen them as they grow up in a breeze so that they are much stronger seedling. So my trays right here, I've got two of them that were $3 a piece. I've got some scrap cardboard and some leftover plastic wrap that's in this. And then my potting soil was $12 at Walmart and I didn't even use an eighth of it. So I may maybe use two dollars worth of potting soil if we want to get fancy a little bit of water and then my light up here so i mean it wasn't that expensive for me to start seeds and if you have 20 bucks you could probably do it as well i will link this light that i have i've used it this is my second year it did fantastic last year i do recommend it and i will leave it linked down in the description box below so you can see what i'm using but i'm going to put right here on the screen how much i spent to start my seeds including that light we're just going to pretend like i just bought it and it's not my second time using it because i'm going to go ahead and include that because if you don't have that light that's something you'll have to buy um but that's how much i used to start seeds guys i mean it's not that much but it is going to feed my family and that's what's important. Guys, you can live your homestead dream on a budget. You don't have to do it fancy or expensive to make it great. But I'll see y'all later, guys. Bye now.